And in our online community, we welcome you. Come on and just raise those hands and praise. Come on, reach them up as high as you can lift them. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and open your mouth and say, Hallelujah. Come on and reach them up to the heavens. Hallelujah. Come on and tell him. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and open your mouth and say, Hallelujah. That's it, where the worshipers at. Hallelujah. Come on and tell him. Hallelujah. Come on and say, Hallelujah. Praise us. 
to say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the King of kings. The Lord of lords. The lover of my soul. Come on and give him glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on. That's it. Press. Press. Press, press, press in. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shout, he's my everything. Come on, come on. Come on. He's more than a gift under the tree. He is the gift. He is the gift that keeps on giving. Come on. I dare you to praise him on his birthday. I dare you to give him glory. Online, come on in. Like and share. But give God glory. Hallelujah. Woo. Hey. Somebody say, he's my everything. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor, he's my everything. He's my everything. He's my everything. Come on and wave at somebody across the aisle and say, neighbor, he's my everything. I know it's Christmas, but I came to tell you, neighbor, he's my everything. I wouldn't have woke up this morning if he didn't whoo, blow life into these lungs. I'm breathing only because of him, and he's my air. He's my everything. Glory. 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 That's it. Flip those hands up. Can we just make one big choir? Repeat after me. Say everything. You're everything to me. Say everything. those hands up. Everything to me. That's it. Put your hands together right where you are. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on in online. Everything. Hallelujah. Your head Life and breath, you're everything to me, everything, hallelujah, you're everything to me, say everything. You're everything to me, life and bread. You're everything to me, say everything. Come on and slip those hands up and say, you're everything to me. 
you say everything. Come on and slip those hands up and just say, Lord, I thank you for being everything. I thank you for being everything. I thank you for being my company keeper. I thank you for being my healer. I thank you for being my master. I thank you for being my ruler. I thank you for being a provider. I thank you for being a protector. Come on and give him glory. Come on and give him glory. Hallelujah. 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 This is an old one. But we're going to sing it. Is that all right? Just want to praise you forever and ever put your hands on it and ever for all you done for me oh blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you help me Thank you, Jesus. Come on. For blessing me. Somebody ought to type online and say, Thank you, Lord. Just wanna. Hey! Forever and ever and ever for all. Y'all can sing it. That's it. You done for me. Oh, blessings and glory, hey, and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Just want to pray, hey. Ever Woo! and uh, you say it. for all you done for me. Oh, you say it. blessings and glory Woo! and honor. They all be wave your hands and say blessings and glory. And honor, they all belong. You say blessings and glory, blessings and glory. And honor, they all be blessings and glory, blessings and glory. And honor, they are. That's it. Blessings and glory Woo! and honor. They all slip those hands up and say, Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Now hug on yourself and say, Lord, I thank you for blessing me. We have a pastor that is coming. Come on. Not only did we praise God for Jesus, but we praise God for his manservant. Say, God bless, God use, Pastor Coleman. Oh, come on, let's praise God, everybody. Come on, if the Lord has been good to you, then you ought to tell him thank you. If the Lord has made a way for you, you ought to tell him thank you. Come on, come on. Come on, tell him thank you. Anybody know he's a way out of no way? Amen. You may be seated if you can. Merry Christmas, everyone. And those of you that are watching online, we thank God for you. Jesus is the reason for the season, ain't he? Hallelujah. Listen, listen. 2022 is almost out of here. Amen. And uh, even though this has been an up and down year, God has still been good, hasn't he? Come on, look at somebody and say, he kept me. 
Yeah, he kept me even when I didn't want to be kept. He kept me anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We just want to say Merry Christmas. And those of you watching online, thank you for tuning in. Like and share. Amen. This is just 60 minutes of worship today, all right? And we're going to let you go back home to your family and enjoy this day. Amen. Uh, but very quickly, listen, let's let's give an offering today. Let's, let's give on today. Let's bless the house of God today. Amen. As, as I always quote, I can't help it. He's going to be with the Lord. He's in heaven. But I can't forget what my pastor always say. He said, this ain't your birthday. It's Jesus' birthday. And we come to give him a gift. We come bearing gifts. So why don't you give a love gift today? You can give online. There's many ways to give. And amen. And so let's be a blessing today. And um, if you want to be blessed, it's still work. Give your tithes and your offerings. Amen. Anybody know that if you work the biblical principles, the biblical principles will work for you. Amen. Thank you so much for your giving. All right. Luke, the second chapter. Luke, the second chapter. And yeah, I'm so excited. Uh, the citywide baptism is coming up. Anybody excited? Amen. History. Missionary Ken is going to be made here on January 1st, 2023. And so we are so excited. But Luke, the second chapter, the 43rd verse, and it reads, When it was over and they left for home, the child Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents didn't know it. Thinking he was somewhere in the company of pilgrims, they journeyed for a whole day and then began looking for him among relatives and neighbors. When they didn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem looking for him. Let's go ahead and get this Christmas party started. Look at five people and tell them, don't forget Jesus. Oh, uh, you can do better. Tell somebody, don't, don't, don't you forget Jesus. <laughs> you may be seated. Yeah, tell them again. Say for real though. For real. Um, don't forget Jesus. Tell them I know you got to open some gifts today. But don't you forget about Jesus. Tell them I know you got to cook them greens. But don't forget Jesus. All right. As, as we celebrate today, it's amazing to me how many people while thinking about Christmas gifts and Christmas trees, have X Christ out of Christmas. Do you know there are people who are talking in Washington, D.C. about getting rid of the Christ in Christmas? Because they felt like it would offend those who are atheists or agnostics. So, so why call it Christmas? Let's just call it Xmas. So we don't offend those who don't believe in Jesus. But I'm sorry, there is no Christmas without Christ. It's better to delete a holiday than dilute it. If you're not going to remember that Christ is the reason for the season, then why even have Christmas? Okay, let's just jaywalk straight to verse 41 because verse 41 says every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. Now, I want you to understand here that there are three things you need to learn, um, three celebrations. You don't have to be a pastor to know this. Every believer should know this. In traditional Judaism, they celebrated three things, Pentecost, Passover, and the Feast of Tabernacles. These were the holiday. Somebody going to catch it later. This was a holiday season. Every male was required to be at the festival. Not women. Women didn't have to come if they didn't want to. It was voluntarily. But the Bible says they both 
Uh -huh. Mary and Joseph went every year. Mary did not have to be there. I feel like preaching in my own church. Watch this. But the Bible says, watch this, Sister O'Neill, she went anyway. Ooh, in 2023, I want y'all to do something for me. I want y'all to learn how to worship on purpose. Y'all just missed that. Let's just have church. I just want to know, is there anybody here that believes that 2023 is the year that you're going to start worshiping God on purpose, that you're not going to wait for nobody else to tell you when to worship? I'm sorry, y'all. People fuss too much. Your wife fuss. Your boss fuss. Your job fuss. So I take pride not to fuss in church. People don't come to church to be fussed at. But let me just fuss for about five minutes, okay? For everybody in 2023, GTV that belongs to GTV, please don't come in so late. Because what you're saying when you come in late, that I just want to hear this preacher and I don't need to worship. But worship, it lubricates your spirit so the word can just slide right in. Y'all got my point? What I'm trying to tell y'all is... That when you come in late, you're listening to me too cold. But can I tell you, maybe the reason the word is not settling in you because the ground is not wet enough. But baby, when you open up your spirit, can I tell all of you that this is not just for women. This is for every man up in here. We come to church not just to hear the pastor, but lean on somebody and say, like the wise men, we came to worship him go ahead oh I wish I had about 10 worshipers here I don't care what a brother say if he never lift his hand man something is wrong I don't care what he say I don't care who's reserved they don't do it at the football game they wouldn't do it if the Cowboys won the Super Bowl if God is leading your life every now and then you're gonna throw your hands up and I need my men to show our women Women, that we are not waiting on the women to lead us in worship. Can I get all my dogs to jump up and holler? Go ahead and slap three people and say, my worship is for real. Go ahead. My worship is real. Go ahead. Come on, say, I got some things that's wrong with me. I'm not perfect, but my worship is real. The Bible says that Mary worship on purpose she said oh no joseph you're not going up there by yourself i'm coming right with you i'm gonna worship too oh y'all get something out of this all of that was my intro now this the christmas story is now on this way because verse 42 and 43 look at it because it's gonna bless your life when jesus was 12 years old they attended the festival as usual after the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first. See, listen, hold on. If you miss this, you're going to miss the whole sermon. At first, look at what it said. His parents didn't miss him. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Pastor. The Bible says they didn't miss him at first. Now, let me contemporize this because I don't know. It's like the Christmas season there. It's, it's, it's the holiday season in Jerusalem because everybody in town was there. Everybody from everywhere all across the nation was there on that day because everybody came to Jerusalem for the holidays. Mary had to go pick up the honey baked ham, um, plus her sister Maxine came in, and her, her Elizabeth, her auntie, she's there. She's got a newborn baby too, so she's trying to help her because she has a newborn baby also. Plus, they ate. Plus, there's a lot of going on trying to entertain, trying to take care of Joseph and all of that. And all of a sudden, hey, it's heading back. And somewhere between already and not yet, Mary realized she forgot Jesus. But here is where thinking people are going to run out this church. This is the most cold-blooded part of the text. The Bible says at first she didn't miss him. Woo. 
Let me tell you something. When you are in a season of stupid, preach, Colbert. I, I need some real people here on this Christmas morning. No, I don't need no fake people right now. It, you can be in a season of stupid. The relationship can be so good. The money can be so good. The new promotion, the new job, and the new house. When you first leave Jesus, I want to talk to some believers who had a stu season of stupid like me where you was not in prayer. You was not in worship. You were not where you needed to be. And sometimes a man can make you feel so good or the girl can be so awesome or or the drugs can feel so great or the club or the new house that it take you a minute to realize you forgot Jesus oh y'all not talking to me I'm gonna try it one more time you can be in a season of stupid and I just want some real honest people with me right now. You can go through a time in your life where for a season that you don't even miss him. But can I tell you on how you know you've been born again? Can I tell you how you know that you've been authentically saved? Because no matter how handsome he is, no matter how much they give you a bonus on your job, no matter how many vacations you take, at some point you gonna miss Jesus. I wish I had 10 people. Y'all didn't hear what I said. The mark of your Christianity or the authentication of your spiritualization is not that you never mess up. It's not that you never had a lustful thought. It's not that you didn't have a season of stupid. The reason why you know you say for real is because no matter how far drift you in, at some point, my soul loved Jesus. At at some point, you look at him and say, get off me. At some point, you say, uh-uh. At some point, it, it don't even, at some point, your soul miss Jesus. How do you know you've been born again? It's not because you've been a perfect girl, but because after a moment, you say something is missing. Well, pastor, that's a lie. I got a cousin that ain't never been here. You can't miss what you never had. I'm preaching too fast today. You can't miss is what you never had but if you ever been washed in the blood of the lamb if Jesus ever get a hold of you something in your soul yeah, Lady Cobra would tell you if you knew some of the calls and texts I get some people you thought who would never call me again and say they would say pastor I'm sitting here thinking uh, the Lord woke me up four in the morning pastor I was just thinking you know what pastor I've been wrong I need to get back I said, that's all right. I knew you were going to miss Jesus. It took you seven years, but there was too much Jesus in you for you to enjoy those streets or to enjoy that life. I knew you was going to call me, daughter. I'm the prodigal son's father. I just stand on the porch because I never know the day when my kid, oh, I feel like preaching. Don't y'all look at me like that, that God didn't wait on you. Okay, let's just go ahead and tear the church up and let's go home and eat our Christmas dinner. Because the next verse says, when they couldn't find him, they went back. Woo! She went back. Can I tell you something? Everybody here ought to praise God that no matter how far you get away from God, baby, you can always come back. Oh, don't you look at me like God didn't let you come back. The Bible says, she realized and said, I'm going back. Can I tell you that no matter how far you've gotten away from God, you can always come back. Somebody at home watching me right now is saying, I'm ashamed to go back to church. I've been gone so long at GTV. And people think, and, 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 and they gonna get, if I go back, they're going to give me that funny look. You must forgot what church you left because all of these people at GTV is crazy too because we can't believe God let us come back. I tell people who shame to come back, I say, girl, if you knew what some of the people in here did last week, if you knew all of us, including the preacher, has made some mistakes, but I'm glad that God is a God that says if I confess my sin, 
He is faithful and just to forgive me and then cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And if you here today and if you're watching me online today and you forgot Jesus, you can always come back. Oh, this is so good because the next verse says three days later, her baby's missing. It's not a few minutes. It wasn't a few minutes. It says three days later. What woman in here or online, if your grown child was missing for 24 hours, in 24 hours, where would you be? The text, you can read the text and not read the text. Come on, just let's unpack this text. The Bible said three days later, three days. You know, sometimes when you leave God, you know, it's kind of hard to get back. It takes you a minute to get that relationship restored because you feel the pain of detachment. You have to fight. The Bible says three days later, look at the screen, it's good. Then finally discovered him in the temple. Sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them, asking questions. This is so critical. Let's, let's unearth this obscure passage that you thought you knew. It said that Jesus was asking them questions. Didn't I always tell you that omnipotent has no ambiguity? Didn't I tell you that sovereignty needs no answer? He already knows everything. So why he asking questions? Because in the temple... They will read whatever they stopped the day before. That's why it becomes so critical when Jesus is grown and he goes to the temple. And the, that day, he had just happened to go to the temple that day. Jesus, a grown man, and they let him do the reading that day. And it just so happened that the day, they're talking about the grown Jesus, when he read in the temple, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He anointed me to preach the gospel. That's a whole another sermon the bible said they reading and he's asking them questions who i would pay money to know what was the questions were can you imagine this 12 year old kid sitting there talking to all of these religious leaders as they reading from the old testament chronological law and a virgin shall come to see and he said who you think that might be Y'all just missed that. He, they reading. They're asking him questions. They have no idea that Jesus is in church. They have no idea that the Messiah that they're reading about. But that's not even the good part, y'all. Here's the good part. The good part is the next verse, and I bid you goodbye because the next verse says, So when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. Jesus sitting there thinking, Mama, you left me. God, I feel like preaching. Y'all not feeling me. She going she to ask Jesus, how did you do this to us? And Jesus said, Mama, are you confused? There are people who tripped out, quit church. They mad at God, mad at me when none of us have left them. Can I tell you, if you look back over your life, God has never left you. Look at your neighbor and say, I left Jesus. Go ahead. Everything that went wrong in my life was because of what I did. How in the world I'm going to turn around and blame God when I left Jesus? Mary going to say, how are you going to play me and your daddy? Mama, you my mother. And you were so caught up in you that you took off without me. I should be screaming at you. And you going to ask me, why did I leave? I hear God saying to somebody on this Christmas morning, don't you blame me. Because I was there all the time. He was there all the time he was there all the time waiting patiently okay he stood right in line 
and said, I'm going to wait right here till you get through with him. And when you get through with that, and whenever you want me back, he's God said, I'm going to be standing right here in line behind your man, behind your dreams, behind your degree and your night classes. And whenever you get through, I'm just going to wait patiently in line. Jesus said, I was there all the time. Look at this. Mary said, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. You know where Jesus was, don't you? At church. Let's go home. And the Bible said, he said to her, did you know that I'm about my father's business? Now, y'all going to love this because only three of y'all going to catch it, though, because Mary going to say, how can you do this to us? Jesus at the church doing what he's called to do. And Mary going to say, how you going to do this to us? You tired of your neighbor? Find you another neighbor and tell him, why do you take my assignment so personal? Go ahead. Uh, oh, y'all not going to feel me. Mary had a little lamb. I know that's all y'all want for Christmas, but there's something else that I want to give you today. There, This is a relational Christmas message. Why do you take my assignment so personal mama mary do you know who i am to this day i was born for this cause came out to the world why are you mad at me about my assignment mama i know you miss me isn't it amazing i got a call from one of my friends and they said we know you know they were trying to be fun we know we need an appointment to see you cobra and i said you so right Y'all missed that <laughs> because what they did not know, it was that morning when one of my members had just died. <laughs> what they didn't know that I was trying to plan a funeral. What they didn't know that one of my pastor friends that I fellowship with was about to lose his mind and I had to encourage him. Because, but, but, but because they don't know your business, they don't know your assignment, <laughs> then they get mad at you for what you're trying to do for you. I'm not mad at you. I'm just doing me. I ain't mad at nobody but I'm not coming over to your house to talk about nothing about who you mad at this week when I got assignments to handle and some of y'all in 2023 is going to miss your moment because other people are taking your assignment too personal I'm gone y'all not catching this if you knew what I just said you would have jumped up uh, but just lean on your neighbor and say in 2023 I gotta be about my father's business tell him I can't let nothing stop me I can't let nothing turn me around come on this is your time don't you let nobody or nothing stop you from being in purpose next year oh I feel like preaching for about three more minutes but can I get about ten people that just made up your mind that you made some mistakes in your life you've done some things you shouldn't have done you've been in some places you shouldn't been in but can I get about five people to just jump up and shake somebody's hand like you gonna shake it off look them in the face and say neighbor don't you forget about Jesus. Say so you may forget to buy something. You may forget to buy somebody a present. But don't forget to thank God that woke you up this morning. He put shoes on your feet. Clothes on your back. And if God made a way out of no way don't you let your cousin don't you let your boyfriend your bad marriage your job your church your ministry don't you let nothing make you forget Jesus because if it had not been for the Lord yeah yeah will you shake your neighbor's hand and say neighbor don't forget Jesus yeah I gotta close now but Deuteronomy said when I give you houses that you did not build when I give you wells that you didn't dig don't forget that it was the Lord that did it for you and if you're not too stuck up then shake somebody's hand and tell them nobody nobody but Jesus 
it was the Lord that got you here this morning. It was God that woke you up. And if you really know it and you're not too mean, just slide out of your seat, walk over to three people and just slap them high five and tell them I can't forget. I can't forget, I can't forget Jesus when I was about to lose my mind. I can't forget, I can't forget how God gave me another chance. If you're not too mean, can I get two people to go to heaven church with me? I said I need five people to just get up and just holler. I can't forget, I can't forget, I can't forget. It was God that saved my life. It was God that filled me with the Holy Ghost. It was God that helped me raise my children. Now you can stand there and be cute, but let everything, I said let everything that had breath, praise God. Don't forget that it was Jesus who hung on Calvary. It was Jesus that got up from the grave. It was Jesus that filled you with his spirit. It was Jesus that put food on your table, clothes on your back. Can I get somebody to have a little church with me and just hug somebody and say, I, I can't forget. I I can't forget it was God is everything if God is everything to you then just turn around in your seat and say I can't forget how the Lord turned me around I feel like preaching can I get somebody during this Christmas morning just to wave your hand and say thank you Lord it's the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in my eyes take about 30 more seconds find you somebody run over real quick and say don't forget Don't forget, I can't forget, I won't forget. He saved me, he delivered me, he healed my body, he took my broken heart and mended again. He took my confused mind and made it. I wish I had the old church because the old church would say how can I forget how can I forget how he brought me out how can I forget when he brought me through how can I forget I never I'll never forget I wish I had somebody that can press the rewind button of your mind and say I'll never forget how the Lord brought me out how the Lord took me through yeah Merry Christmas Merry Christmas Merry Christmas but don't forget Jesus I know you got to open up some gifts, but don't forget Jesus. I know you got to see some loved ones, but don't forget Jesus. Jesus is the reason for this season. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God. Father, we thank you. Don't forget Jesus. Don't forget Jesus. 
even during these busy times, don't forget Jesus. Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you, Lord, for most of all who you are. You are our Savior. You are our King. God, I pray for every person that are in this sanctuary, those that are watching online, whatever need they need today, God, I pray that you meet every need, every physical need, emotional needs, spiritual need. God, meet that need right now in the name of Jesus. And God, as we leave this place today, to go back to our various homes, to be with our loved ones and friends and people that we care about. Lord, let us not never forget you. Lord, we're taking you with us everywhere we go. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say, thank God. Amen. Those of you that watch it online, God bless you. You have a Merry Christmas. If you haven't had a chance to give, go ahead and give right now your Christmas gift to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.